This is a Friday Shoes production. This is Lesson 8-3 in our books on page 427. The target is I can write two-step equations that represent real-life situations. Now, if you remember back in Chapter 1, you learned how to write verbal sentences as one-step equations. Now, some verbal sentences translate into two-step equations, and here's an example of one. It says the sum of 400 and 15 times a number is 700. So we're going to take that English sentence and we're going to change it into a math sentence here. You can see how they do it. They said uh, let n represent the number and I usually use x but they're using n. Now we're going to take the, that exact sentence up there and actually translate it into the math which you see there. It says the sum <clears throat> which means addition of two things, the total of. So we have 400 and 15 times a number which is 15 times n and then is, which is equals, and then 700 is 700. Let's try a couple down here. That's it on our own here. Let's translate the sentences into equations. And I'll read you the first one, <clears throat> and then we're going to translate it into the equation. So the first one says 8 less than 3 times the number is negative 23. First thing you see is 8. And many kids will write down, oh, okay, so we put 8 down. Well. Read the whole thing first. And I, I read it. It says 8 less. 8 less than 3 times a number. When I'm thinking of 8 less than something, I'm actually subtracting 8 from something else. So 8 doesn't come first. It comes after the number I want to subtract it from. So 8 less than something is going to be something minus 8. So take a look at what happens here when I do this. So we got 8 less than 3 times a number. So we're actually taking 3x and minusing 8. 3 times a number is the 3x. 8 less than that would be minus an 8 from it. And then we got the is, which is the equal sign, and then negative 23. So those are the pieces. And the translation doesn't always mean directly translated. Notice again, the 8 comes first in the sentence, but it doesn't come first in the equation. How about number 2 here? 13 is 7 more than twice a number. 13 is 7 more than twice a number. 7 more than twice the number would be adding 7 on. Okay, so let's take a look. 13 is 7 more than twice the number. Now, because it's addition, you can switch the 7 and the 2x, but just to look at what they've said, it says 13 is 7 more than twice the number, adding on that 7 to the 2x. All right, how about number 3 here? Quotient of a number and 4 decreased by 1 is equal to 5. Well, first of all, the quotient means dividing. And decreased means minus. So let's, let's pull this together here. So we've got the quotient of a number and 4. So we're taking a number. I'll use n here. n and dividing by 4. And that's how we represent it as a fraction. Or you can say n divided by 4 if you like. Now we're going to decrease by 1, so we'll say minus 1 is equal to, that's simple, and then 5. There it is. That is the quotient of a number in 4, decreased by 1, is equal to 5. All right, how about you give it a shot? Try these three, stop the video, come on back, check how you did. All right, translate each sentence into an equation. Here's A. 15 equals 3 more than 6 times the number. 3 more than, that's going to be addition, 6 times the number, that's going to be 6 times x or n or whatever you want to use. And the 15 equals is pretty simple. So here we go, 15 equal, oops, excuse me, equals 3 more than 6 times the number. There it is. How about B? If 10 is increased by the quotient of a number and 6, the result is 5. So 10 being increased by the quotient, which is the answer to a division problem, and it says the quotient of a number and 6. So number and 6 are being divided. And then the result, or the equal sign, is 5. Okay, so here we go. 10. We got 10, and that's increased by the quotient of a number in 6, the quotient of a number in 6 is n divided by 6, and then the result is 5. There it is. That one does translate pretty much. 
word for word. All right, how about C? The difference between 12 and twice a number is 18. The difference means subtraction. So when I hit difference here, you're gonna see I put a subtraction. And then between 12 and twice a number, you gotta put it in order respectively. So 12 comes first, so we're gonna put that in front. And then twice a number comes second. And then is, which is equals, and then of course 18. So that's what this one would look like. You cannot switch that one around. If you have 2x minus 12, that's a different math problem. It does not equal 18. Remember, subtraction is not commutative. All right. How about a real-world example? This is personal training. A personal trainer buys a weight bench for $500 and W weights, all the weights that they put on the bench, on the, uh, the bar, for $25 each. The total cost of the purchase is $850. How many weights were purchased? Well, let's take a look first here. We're buying a bench, that's $500. Then we're adding on a bunch of weights for $25 each. And then the total or the equals is $850. So they're going to use W to represent the number of weights. And they put that in the, the sentence, the paragraph too. And here we go. So we have $500 for the bench plus $25 per weight which means 25 times W, however many weights you have, and that is gonna be a total of $850. So there's the equation that we have, and then of course they solve it for us here. You subtract 500 and then divide by 25. That's two steps there. Do you see the two red steps? That's why we call these two-step equations. And we get a 14, so 14 weights were purchased. Let's take a look at number five. Dining. You and your friend's lunch cost $19. Your lunch cost $3 more than your friend's. How much was your friend's lunch? Well, your friend's lunch plus your lunch equals $19, the cost. Now, let F represent the cost of your friend's lunch. If your friend's lunch costs, let's call it F dollars, yours was F plus 3, according to the story, because it says your lunch cost $3 more than your friend's. So you take the F and you add three. Now the total would be F plus F plus three. Your friend's lunch and your lunch. Add it up. And that's equal to 19. You can see how they've put that together there. So when we put that together and now solve it, you'll see we have F plus F plus three equals 19. And then they simplify by combining like terms. You got two F plus three equals 19. Now they start to solve, you see the two steps. We subtract three on both sides and then divide by two, we have eight. So your friend spent $8. Your lunch was $11 because you take the eight and you add three on. All right, you give it a shot. Try this first one. I got two of them for you and then we're done. Meteorology, suppose the current temperature is 54 degrees. It is expected to rise two degrees each hour for the next several hours. In how many hours will the temperature be 78 degrees? All right, so currently it's 54 degrees, right? And it's gonna rise, they say, two degrees per hour. So I'm gonna say, or each hour, so that's two times H. However many hours it is, you just multiply that by two, and that's how many degrees it went up for that amount of hours. And we wanna know when it's gonna equal up to 78. All right, well, there's our formula, or excuse me, our equation, our two-step equation. So how do we solve it? Let's put our train tracks in there so we keep our left and right sides uh, organized. Step one is going to be subtract 54 from both sides. And when you do that, the left side, you're left with 2H, and then the right side, you get 24. Now to solve this one, to get rid of this 2, because we're going to get H by itself, we will divide by 2 which is the number in front. And then the twos cancel out, cross them out. We do four, 24 divided by two on the right side and we get 12. So the hours that it will take to reach 70 degrees is 12 hours. Hopefully you did well on that one. How about this one here? Stop the video and try it and then come on back, see how you did. It says the perimeter of a rectangle is 40 inches. The width is eight inches shorter than the length. Write and solve an equation to find the dimensions of the rectangle. Well, 
First off, I like to draw a rectangle because anytime they're talking about a shape that I know and then talking about the lengths and widths and all that, I like to actually draw one. So here you go. You could draw yourself your own one. And hopefully you did. Now, they told me that the width is 8 inches shorter than the length. So if I do know the length, and I'll call it X, which is the longest side of the rectangle, then I do know that the width is going to be 8 inches shorter, or subtracting off 8. So you can see that the width is X minus 8. All right, from there, we do know that the perimeter is 40 inches. So we have enough information here to actually do this problem. And if you remember what perimeter is, it's the distance around the figure. So it's all four sides added up. And we do know the lengths. They're given to us. They're x and x minus 8 for the length and the width. So what we need to do is just add them all up. Sum all of the sides, and they have to equal 40. So notice I'm taking x, I'm adding the other length, x, and then I'm adding the x minus 8, and I'm adding another x minus 8. And there they are. Now that I have my long map, that has to equal 40. So now, now that I have my long map problem, all I have to do is simplify. And I put ones in front, and I put those together, and I got the minus 16. You could also do plus negative 16 there. Next step would be adding on 16 to both sides. That gets rid of that negative 16, or minus 16. Now you have 4x equals 56. Last step is going to be divide by a 4 on both sides. So when you divide the left side by 4, you get x, and then you divide the right side by 4, you get 14. Now they want you to find both the length and the width. x, if you remember from the top up here, x is the length. So 14 is the length. And then, of course, 14 minus 8 would be the width. So the last thing you have to do is just find the length and the width and state it. So the length is 14 and the width is going to be 6. That's all I have for you today. Don't hesitate to rewatch the video or look at the examples in the book. Or you can always look at the personal tutor videos online on the online textbook. And as usual, this has been a Friday Shoes production.